Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, I'd just like to apologize for taking a little bit longer to get this video up and running. I've been spending the past few days just kind of figuring out other ways to stay busy, keep my mind occupied, stay positive. Um, I've been doing some other artwork of mine. I've been doing some baking. But here is your newest art therapy video. Um, I know we got some requests on how to paint on the rocks. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of rock painting as well as some alternatives that you can try out. I wanted to give a quick little recap as to who I am just in case you missed the first couple of videos that I posted. Um, my name is Jessica Welch. I'm a student at the Toronto Art Therapy Institute. I have completed all of my coursework. Right now I'm just working to collect my practicum hours and right now I'm just trying to provide some fun art therapy directives that you can do at home on your own or with your loved ones um, to help pass time, to help keep positive energy going, to help with anxiety, stress, um, anything like that. So please reach out. The other things that I'll be sharing today are derived from mindfulness-based art therapy. So just surrounding techniques, a lot of um, practices that you can do by yourself, with your family, with your loved ones, um, to just practice bringing yourself to the present moment, um, kind of focusing on the task at hand, and finding ways to center yourself. Right, so first of all, you're going to find yourself a rock. Um, the first one that I painted, I found when I was out for a walk. I brought it home, I washed it, and I just painted it. Um, this one I just had at home. So technically, you could paint any rock. Um, I like to go for ones with smoother surfaces, but at the end of the day, the paint is going to go on to the surface. It'll just be more textured than others. If you have a like bumpier rock, that's fine. Um, it may be a little more difficult to like paint details or words if it's really bumpy, but at the end of the day, it's more about enjoying the process. And then at the end, you have a really great grounding stone that you can meditate upon, you can sit with, you can put it on your bedside table as a gentle reminder. Right, so today I've decided that I'm going to paint a mandala on the flatter side of my stone. I find that mandalas can just be really calming to focus on and work inward, outward, outward, inward. I'm just going to read something really short. The meaning of mandala comes from the Sanskrit meaning circle. Even though it may have features like squares or triangles, a mandala always has a concrete circular nature. So behind me is a mandala. So mandalas offer balancing visual elements, symbolizing unity and harmony. So I'm going to start off by painting this surface of my rock with a white background, just a full flush white background. I find that it really helps the other colors of my acrylic paints pop nicely. Um, you don't have to do this, but I just find that the other colors stand out really well. So I do about three or four layers of the white background. I let each layer dry really well before putting the second or third layer on top. Again, you don't have to do a white background because sometimes it can look really nice if you paint something directly onto the rock and you have the colors and the textures of the rock itself coming through with your painting. All right, so now that my surface is dry, I'm going to start my mandala. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on the center and moving outward. So a neat trick is you can either use obviously the tip of your paintbrush to create these dots and lines, squiggles, whatever you're doing, or if you just want to do like a circular mandala with dots coming outwards, you can always use the back of your paintbrush. So I'm going to do both ways just to show you guys what each way looks like. So that's me painting a circle by hand. This is me using the back of my paintbrush. If you don't have paintbrushes at home, you can also use things like skewers, the back of the skewer, it's a flat surface, so that will work as well if you want to dip and stick onto your rock. Alright, so I think I'm finished. So as you can see, I did some triangles, line circles, and all I did was simply work from the middle, started with a point, and just went outwards. Um, you can start from the perimeter as well and just kind of work your way inwards. And as well, you can tell that it's not perfect, like this is not a circular perfect stone, so I'm going to have like some edges ending earlier and some edges having more detail. Um, after this dries, I'm going to do like a little bit of work on the raw side so that you can see the difference um, because I think it would actually look really neat if you just painted on the rock itself. 
worked on the raw side of the rock and I want to show you guys what it looks like. Um, I did smudge the orange a little bit, but so I did the word breathe and I did the word <laughs> love and some dots. So I think it could work. I think it could be pretty neat. Um, again, this rock is quite light in color, so I think the colors still show well. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be the most vibrant rock. If you have a darker rock and you still just want to allow that to come through in the colors and textures of that rock, that's fine too. Like painting the rock itself can really just bring us to the present moment. And then at the end of the day, you have a lovely grounding rock that can sit on your bedside table. It can be somewhere in your living space. I've also noticed that when I go on walks, I see a couple of rocks that have been painted on and um, I don't know, it brightens my day. It makes me smile. Um, I saw one with like a bunny rabbit on it and I've seen one with just like stripes on it. Um, so I don't pick them up and bring them home, but just, you know, when I'm going to clear my head and I spot something like that, it makes me smile. I wanted to share with you guys one more really neat way of creating a grounding stone. Um, basically you take those like glass, the artificial glass pebbles that people use for like fish tanks or they put them in vases. So I know that they're available at the dollar store. Um, you can grab a bag for really cheap. I went with the clear ones just because I think it's most effective depending on your design below. So this is my glass bead. So all you have to do is grab some regular paper. You're gonna trace the perimeter of your stone on the paper. So that's the size of the circle that you have to work within. Um, so it can be pretty small because I did use like tiny ones as well. And you can write, you can color, you can draw symbols, whatever you'd like to do in that space. You're gonna cut that circle out. You're gonna put some good old regular Elmer's glue stick on it and you're gonna stick it at the base of your circle. And this is what happens. So it's almost like a magnified message to yourself. Um, so I keep this like on my bedside table. You can keep one in the pocket of your jacket. Um, the smaller ones are great for that. And it's simply just regular printer paper. Um, you draw the circle around, you cut it out, you put glue on the surface that has the drawing on it. And stick it to the base of the acrylic glass pebble and you have yourself a little pebble so yeah these are great to have in your pocket you know if you're having a stressful time walking somewhere if you're feeling a bit emotional if something's taking over if you it's great to always have something on you like that i like textured things sometimes i have my sage essential oils um and I find it really helpful when you can customize them yourself. So if you have a little heart on you, if you have a little reminder, maybe there's a symbol that reminds you to take a breath or um, maybe you can have the number five to remind yourself, name five blue things around you. Or maybe you can have an S to say, you know, go through your senses, practice grounding myself right now while holding that rock and kind of being present in that moment. So yeah, that's just another little neat trick I wanted to share with you guys. I don't know if I'm like really late on figuring out that, but I thought it was pretty cool and I wanted to share it with y'all. All right, so next up is a pretty simple one. All you're gonna need is paper and some drawing materials. You can use markers, crayons, color pencils, pens, whatever you have, pencils are fine. What you're gonna do is on your piece of paper, you're going to do one big great, great scribble. Um, you can do it for a few seconds, however long you really need. At the end of the day, it's a great opportunity to kind of externalize what's going on in here, put it out on paper. So you can be kind of aggressive with your scribble, get it out, um, maybe some areas are more intense and you focus and then you kind of glide as you start to ease, as you start to breathe. So just go for it, no right or wrong ways in art therapy, and then I'll explain the next step after. So this is what my scribble looks like. And what I'd like you to do next is, um, sometimes I use a crayon so that it's just like completely all colorful. But what you're gonna do is 
you're gonna look at your image and I want you to like rotate your page, look at it from different angles and find something within your scribble, whatever stands out to you. And it just gives you the opportunity again to practice mindfulness. It's a great grounding technique. Um, if you're feeling a bit dysregulated, if your emotions are kind of taking over, take the opportunity to kind of scribble on paper and just focus in and focus on your breathing. Look for something within your imagery and use color to kind of bring that to life. So I'm going to do mine. And so again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can simply trace the image that you see, allow it to pop more. Um, you can go in and color each space. Creature, friend, dancing here. I saw a crown, which is interesting because that's kind of like my up and down feeling that I was experiencing. Um, and I have them, at first I saw them dancing, but now it looks as though they're embracing the smaller figure for a hug. Um, which makes me really happy. Um, I've been missing friends and family and so I think this speaks to me a lot about just the human connection that I've been missing but so you can start filling it in. So another way of approaching this technique would be to just use the lines and shapes um, to create fun patterns um, and just create something positive out of the lines that you've created. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything. You don't have to see anything within the piece. You can just spend some time doodling. Um, you can you can just create a really fun design and that's just kind of bringing you to the present moment again. So it's just re really a fun grounding technique to kind of slow you down, focus on your breath and the task at hand. Kind of an example of what I mean by using the space and shapes that you have to just go in and create patterns. So simply just like using this shape taking that opportunity to draw, doodle, create a design, write words, you can journal. Um, taking the opportunity to transform this squiggle and this scribble um, can be really helpful in itself. There are two ways that you can approach the scribble drawing. Um, you can either kind of find something within your piece and bring it to life. Um, you can add stuff to them, you don't have to stick to just the scribble. Or you can just kind of go with the design that you have and develop it. Again, this gives you the opportunity to just kind of externalize what's going on, release any tension, and find a more optimistic way to transform it. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching. I would love to see what you guys create. If you have any questions, if you have any recommendations as to what you'd like to see next, whether it's for adults, for kids, for elders, teenagers, whoever, um, send us a DM. Also, if you'd like some art therapy techniques or directives that may help you with something you're struggling with, um, just send us a message. I'd be happy to kind of pull up some resources, um, share some directives that I think you can do at home to kind of relieve that stress or anxiety or whatever it is you're feeling. So it doesn't necessarily only have to be for populations you're interested in, but if it's for yourself or something you are dealing with, let us know so we can provide some kind of support. And thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Happy Friday.